Streaming media giant Netflix has been in the news even more than usual lately, and the moves they're making are a window into the state of the streaming industry right now. In this video, we cover five things Netflix is doing right now that all cord cutters should care about. We'll start with the streamer's venture into live sports, then discuss all the money it's made in its recovery from 2022 losses, and we'll talk about its increased signups because of the recent password crackdown. Then we'll wrap up with its international focus and elimination of its cheapest ad-free plan. Along the way, we'll discuss how all this could impact streamers and what it tells us about the state of streaming right now. Let's dive in with number one, Netflix's move into live sports streaming. A celebrity golf tournament called The Invitationals is coming to Netflix. The streamer is putting stars from its reality shows Formula One, Drive to Survive, in full swing in the tournament. That could give it some crossover appeal to fans of those shows. Though initial interest has been lukewarm, according to a report from data solutions firm Civic Science on Streamable, industry insiders tend to think it's still a ways off from competing in any real way with Paramount Plus and Peacock, which both have numerous live sporting events, including NFL football games. While Netflix has an intriguing new eight-part docuseries called Quarterback that it made with NFL Films, it doesn't have any live football content. And as anyone who tried to watch the Love is Blind live reunion special can tell you, Netflix still needs to get better at streaming live shows. If it botches a live sports game the way that it did that debacle, people will be beyond livid. Yeah, and it's hard to see big sports leagues trusting Netflix until it demonstrates it can successfully stream live sporting events. This celebrity golf tournament gives it a chance to do that. Should Netflix succeed, it could look to snag something bigger, like the NBA. It wants some streaming-only games after the 2024-2025 season. Apple and NBC have already shown interest, but there's no reason Netflix couldn't as well. And then there's baseball. The MLB and Diamond Sports Group are in a world of hurt. With that ecosystem collapsing, there could be an opportunity for Netflix to snag some streaming rights in a deal similar to ones Apple TV Plus and NBC have in play already. And more broadly, Netflix's move into live sports is part of a larger trend. Peacock is streaming exclusive Big Ten sporting events, along with two exclusive NFL games. WBD says it plans to add live sports to its streaming service, Max. Apple TV has soccer, and Amazon has Thursday night football games. It's clear that live sports are shifting to streaming. Now let's look at our second thing to know about Netflix, the fact that it has recovered all of its losses from 2022. Its signature color might be red, but Netflix's stock has been all green this year. After having historic losses last year that led investors to panic, Netflix has rebounded. As Alexandra Canal reported for Yahoo Finance, Netflix's stock has been on an upward trajectory since Wall Street analysts have been optimistic about its future performance, expecting the streamer to add 2 million subscribers in the second quarter of 2023. Yeah, analysts actually think Netflix is positioned to outperform its competitors, and that's in large part to the revenue it's generating from two other pieces of news we will get to next. First, Canal reported that its crackdown on password sharing could generate $2 billion of incremental annualized revenue opportunity. Getting more signups for its ad-supported plan will generate ad revenue as well. Those moves are giving Netflix cash it can use to invest strategically in content that will help it grow. Content like live sports or possibly licensing HBO original content from WBD. Reports are out that WBD is looking to generate some revenue by licensing out HBO original series like Issa Rae's Insecure. HBO content has run on Netflix in the past, so it seems plausible that it could happen again. Rumors are even circulating that Netflix could make a big swing and buy Paramount. That would give it its own studio and Paramount's massive content library. Still, these are just rumors, and at this point, not anything more than that. What it shows more than anything is the competition and consolidation happening in the streaming space. We've known a culling was coming for some time, and all these moves only strengthen that point. Ultimately, that could prove bad for streamers, as it will reduce choice and increase prices. But only time will tell. Now let's look at a third piece of news, Netflix's crackdown on sharing passwords. Since cracking down on password sharing in May, Netflix has seen new signups jump by the highest amount in the U.S. in the past four years. It got nearly 200,000 signups in two days alone in late May. Netflix has stressed that an account is for one household and has made a way for people to add non-household members on for $7.99 a month. The U.S. now joins other countries including Canada, Spain, and several in South America, along with others where password sharing is no longer allowed. 
People wondered how many signups the move would generate for Netflix. Would people pay up who had been getting it free or for half price, or just opt for a fast service instead? Well, it looks like the answer to that question has been a good one for Netflix. People value its content enough to pay at least $8 a month for it. Still, it will be important to watch what happens with signups and cancellations as the year goes on. Initial success could turn to more cancellations as people become dissatisfied with content on the platform and having to pay full price for it. Yeah, and you can tell Netflix is concerned about keeping as many people who were formally sharing an account as possible with its rollout of profile transfers between existing accounts. We knew this was coming and now it's here. Users can transfer profiles from existing accounts to newly created ones. This allows people no longer sharing a plan to retain their watch history and preferences. Let's move on to a fourth focus in the news lately with Netflix, and that's its international content. It's easy to forget sometimes since Netflix started in America that most of its growth is coming internationally. This is helpful right now given the ongoing writer strike and now actor strike in Hollywood because it gives people more new content to watch on the platform. But it's also important to watch as someone who subscribes in the U.S. if you want to know where its content investment will go in the future. As the Hollywood Reporter showed earlier this year, Europe, the Middle East, and Africa overtook the U.S. and Canada as Netflix's largest region of subscribers at the end of 2022. And in Korea, Netflix has more than 30% of the streaming market there, making it by far the country's dominant service. Some concerns have begun to arise around the world that Netflix has too much power in picking which content gets made. That has led to countries like Canada passing a law requiring streamers to contribute to the production of local titles. It's good to remember that competition is good everywhere, not just in America. Netflix is going to fight it, but overall it's healthier when streaming services have stiff competition as it keeps prices lower for consumers. Speaking of lower prices, let's cover our last piece of news, and that's Netflix eliminating its lowest priced ad-free plan. Netflix's ad-supported plan has been successful in generating revenue for the streaming giant. In fact, its efforts on connected TV platforms have fared better than Roku or Fubo TV. Netflix appears to be capitalizing well on advertising opportunities across the streaming space, and of course it wants to keep that success rolling. One of the ways it can make more money from ad revenue is by axing its cheapest non-ad supported plan. That's the plan we personally are on. For some time it has hidden that plan so that you have to take an extra click to get to it. Now news is out that it has decided to discontinue its $10 per month ad-free plan called Basic in Canada. That has people wondering if the U.S. is next. The move indicates that Netflix may be testing different pricing models and subscription plans across various regions in an effort to move more people to an ad-supported plan and thus generate more revenue. Netflix isn't alone in this either. We've seen this moving across the streaming space. Media companies make more from advertising revenue than they do from subscriptions. Increasingly, we're going to have to pay a premium for ad-free content as prices rise throughout the space. Sadly, the days of really cheap ad-free plans are gone. It's just an unfortunate byproduct of the streaming space maturing. And it shows why it's more important than ever to stay on top of what you're subscribed to and to have a plan for your streaming dollars so that you make sure you're getting the most from what you're spending. Yeah, you can watch our video on the best streaming bundles you can make yourself for under $20 a month. Or you can try a combination of free ad-supported streaming services and on-demand services with ad plans to keep your overall costs down. Personally, we prefer to watch Netflix without ads as most of the content on there has been created without ad breaks, making interruptions jarring and unsatisfying. But ultimately, it's just important to know what matters most to you and finding the cheapest way to get that. And that's exactly what we will keep helping you do here and in our live streams on Fridays at noon central. What do you think of the moves Netflix is making? Let us know in the comments below. And if you haven't already, don't forget to like, subscribe, and turn on notifications so you can get all our latest news and reviews when they drop. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you in our next video.